Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Elizabeth S.A. podcast pilot, episode one. Uh, could be a pilot, could be uh, a one-off, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I thought it's time I uh, jumped on to uh, the channel. Uh, I'm the guy who's been posting these videos all year, uh, Elizabeth S.A. tribute channel, uh, basically a celebration, a retrospective, and hopefully a looking forward to the future of Elizabethans and life <laughs> on the Northern Plains, really. It's not necessarily confined to Elizabeth, but it's definitely Elizabeth-centric. So uh, I have with me today the lovely Sharina Winton from Elizabeth Downs. <laughs> and on the control panel, we have Jay. Hello. Jay doesn't want to be seen. So, uh, well, actually... I don't have the budget for three cameras, so. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> not I've got to move back. Not, Jay tells not, me I've got to move back when I laugh. Not seen, but heard. Not seen, yes, but definitely mm. heard. That's right. And which is part of what this channel is about, really. Um, I'm hoping this channel serves as a, a tool, I guess, for people to feel seen and heard in uh, the Elizabeth area. Uh, I grew up there myself. I was born in 1970 at the La McEwan Hospital, like so many of you would have been born at the La Mac. In 1970, yeah, I grew up in Smithfield Plains. And uh, I have lived for the last two decades in Queensland. And when, when COVID hit, it basically obliterated my lifestyle and the lifestyle I'd become accustomed to. And so I decided to come back. This is where all my long-term friends are and uh, my family. And I came back to see if I can't be of some service to the land upon which I was born. And so... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Will needs me at all. <laughs> I do need you, definitely. I've never done this before. Uh, hence why it might be the last time. <laughs> I might completely suck at this. I don't know. But Sharina, you came mm. from, well, you come from, were you born in Elizabeth Downs? No. No, no I um, I was born at uh, QEH, so Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Oh. So, bit of, a, <laughs> bit of an upgrade there. Uh, but thanks for asking. <laughs> um, yes, my mum uh, and I and the family sort of like moved around. So, um, my mum uh, was born in England. She was six when she came out to Australia in 1954. And... Oh. Um, you know, you know, stakes as big as your plate and all that kind of stuff and land of sunshine and jobs and... Uh, I have never heard that expression. All that kind of stuff. Your stakes as big as your plate. Stakes as big as your plate, land even, of sunshine. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Well, you know, like um, <laughs> back in the day... Well, I don't know, being vegan. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a steak in quite some time. But, uh, you, the, you know, all the, the land, land of promise... You know, right. pretty much. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, we moved around. My grandparents um, uh, came out on the Strathard in 1954 with my mum. She was very sick in England because of the cold weather. So they actually met a carpenter on board who lived at uh, Blackwood. And uh, he said to my granddad, don't worry. He said, I'll build your house at Blackwood in the hills, you know. And my granddad said, nah, don't worry about it. We're moving to Elizabeth. And here we are. <laughs> so that um, essentially is, I guess, my story. I was born, you know, Queen Elizabeth, Woodville area. Mm. area. And, um, but eventually when I was five, we moved here to Elizabeth, Elizabeth Grove. My mum is mm. still in that house. Wow, really? Uh, she's bought That's it. It's cool. a little semi-detached house. And, um, you yeah. know, she, she earned, uh, you know, her keep and uh, paid off it. Yeah. Wow. And so I haven't transgressed very far. I'm Elizabeth Downs now, and I've been there 20, 24, 25 years. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you and your family are what I refer to as Elizabeth Originals. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. so, if they came over in 54, I mean, Elizabeth was established in 55. And when when did they move to Elizabeth? It, it must have been right Ye at the beginning. Yeah. It was pretty much right at the beginning. Um, <laughs> when they first, uh, it sounds like we're doing this for, for real now, but we, when they came over, they um, got transported on our trucks. We are doing this for real, aren't we? Yeah. It's, 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 it seems very real. Because um, we, we, I feel like I've got quite serious. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, you know, they, they got moved on cattle trucks and they stayed in wheat silos. Wow. Um, yeah. So it was really fancy. Do you know what I mean? So that. Wheat you know, silos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. Um, uh, and they they slept on stained mattresses. So they were they were oh, promised all wow. this good stuff, yeah. and yeah, it, and it d didn't happen. 
Elizabeth was dirt roads. Mud. Nothing was being built. Mud. Dust yeah, storms. from the very beginning. And I was too young to really remember that. So wow. these are really stories that, you know, that my nan was a big storyteller and she had dementia. So quite often you would hear the stories and stories again. Repeatedly. Repeated. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, though, you know, that um, the art of storytelling is kind of lost because I don't talk to my girls like that. But um, I think what you're doing is really, really cool because it, it gives a sense of, uh, I guess, of pride because Elizabeth gets a bad rap uh, on social media, the news. If there's any crime or anything like that. You know, we, we're highlighted for all the yeah. not so great stuff. So I think what you're really doing is is um, a really cool initiative. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my voice did really break many years ago. I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, and that's one of the great things about uh, Elizabeth is how nuanced there are many different versions of Elizabeth. I've discovered, especially since I've started studying its history, so. You know, when you're talking about when your parents came over, the first 15 years of Elizabeth, for me, when I studied the first 15 years before I was born, so 55 to 70, there was a real sense of hope here. The, I think the big difference between when Elizabeth first started was people came over. First of all, it was really just post-World War II. So people are leaving, in many cases, devastated lives, ruined cities you know, uh, no jobs, all that kind of thing. So they came here being promised something, uh, you know, a, a second chance, really. And then when they get here, of course, there's a lot of um, creativity happening in terms of they're still building the city, houses are coming up, factories are coming into the town. So there's a sense of a future, you yeah. know. So when I, when I study 55 to 70 especially, there's this people who are living here have a sense of a future. Whereas if I think about people who are born here today, you know, if you think about when I was four or five, I think four or five is when you really first start getting aware of your environment and you really start, it really starts to sink, sink in the predicament that you're in or whatever situation you're in. And so today I think, you know, when I think of young kids who are first becoming their, aware of their environment here. I, I don't really know what it's like for them, but I imagine that sense of a future isn't there the way it was between 55 and 70. You know, this idea that you're a part of something that has a future that is moving forward. I know we have the, the Playford thing happening, um, but it's, it's not the same. Elizabeth had its own identity you know, and its own sense of self back in those uh, early years. <clears throat> and to me, they're completely different worlds. So when I study Elizabeth from 55 to 70, I feel like I'm studying someone else's town. It doesn't feel like I'm studying my town. When I, when I first started, sorry, I'm getting instruction from Jay. I'm <laughs> the first time I've done this. <laughs> I got to, I got to lean forward to talk and lean back to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> in a synchronized fashion. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so for me, there are just, there are many different versions of Elizabeth and they're all valid. So when I was growing up, Elizabeth, for me, was a terrifying place. I didn't have the, the affection that I have for Elizabeth then that I do now because I was too afraid of it because of experiences that I had growing up and, and being very different. You know, when I became aware of my environment, when I really started to orientate myself, I'm in an industrial town um, and it may not come across immediately, but I'm not exactly what you'll call like a man's man. You know, I'm not, I'm not the bloke <laughs> around the barbecue yeah. fixing up the car. Yeah. <laughs> and certainly the idea of a, uh, of a lifetime in factory work for me was, that's just not who I am. You know, I'm, I'm not built for that. I did work at Holden's. I was a welder, if you can believe that. Um, and I hated it. I was miserable. Um, I felt completely displaced. And that was my experience of Elizabeth at that time. And it was valid, but it took me a long time to realize that there are many different versions of the place and they're all valid, you know, and some people's, uh, version of Elizabeth, again, especially if they were here in the beginning was one of community and bonding and creativity and, uh, a sense of adventure having left 
you know, they've come halfway across the world. They arrive here, you know, like you said, mm. it's dirt and, but at the same time, it was the beginning of something. There was that hope and there was a future. So for me, I, I love the nuance of that. I love that there are all these different versions of the one place and so many of those and, and a huge part of that is is really based upon what's going on behind people's eyes rather than what's in front of them you know so my version of elizabeth being a terrifying place was a lot of that had to do with the pressure that i put on upon myself about who i was supposed to be and what i needed to do in order to fit in and knowing that i didn't fit that um what's been lovely about coming back is after being away for so long and living a completely different life, um, is that I've discovered that all that pressure that I put on myself back then was really self-imposed and that people are actually a lot more accepting than you realize. Yeah. I think back in the day, now I'm sounding old, I'm 48, so I'm, I'm a 72 girl. Uh, 80s were really cool. 90s were pretty cool. Love, um, yeah. And there was, you know, I guess a, a sense of community. You knew all your neighbours. Mm. You played on the street. You moved out the way for cars. Do you know what I mean? You played football and street cricket and, um, you know. About, do people not move out of the way for cars? <laughs> do, you know, but do you know what I mean? No, I mean, it's so funny, but, you know, like um, – there's that sense now where you don't see kids on the street. No. Um, you hardly ever see them on their bikes. Do you know what I mean? Um, you don't have the, the street football. You've got bigger houses. You've got... Um, smaller uh, gardens. Smaller gardens. <laughs> if uh, any you've, garden. You've got parks everywhere, which is great. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I think the sense of community and knowing your neighbours and inviting them around and asking for, you know, uh, a cup of sugar... Those days have kind of, you know, especially in, in my instance, there's a lot of rental properties. So people are coming and going quite quickly. Mm. So you don't really get to make those connections mm. like you did back then. Um, and, and school and social media and lots of factors, you know, employment, uh, domestic violence, all that kind of stuff impacts, I guess, any place, not just Elizabeth mm. um, and how we connect. But, mm. um, and of course, you know, your councils as well, you know, they of course have an effect on how we grow and, uh, and Elizabeth has the, uh, capacity to extend where, you know, so Salisbury, you know, that's where it's like we work, it, you build that up. Um, but Elizabeth has the capacity to, with the land that it's got can, you know, stretch out far and, um. Even now, even yeah, still, it's, yeah, it's still ever so changing. And, and just, uh, the, take a slight pause. I should probably uh, slip this in now that you've mentioned Salisbury. We are filming and recording this from PBAFM Community Radio in Salisbury, ironically enough. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. <laughs> oh, did you like that, Jay? I moved back very nicely for the, for the laugh. See, I'm getting the hang of this already. <laughs> but I think also, um, speaking of councils, one of the brilliant things they did early on in terms of the shopping centres was they created shopping centers that acted as community hubs. So they were designed in such a way they had the, the seating outside in kind of, you know, with little gardens and things like that. At Elizabeth West shops, you had that huge train that used to sit outside that the kids could play on. So there were, there were uh, all these opportunities, there were public libraries at quite a number of the, the local shopping centers. So there were all these opportunities. They weren't designed for people to just go in, part with their money, grab their goods and then go home again. They were designed in such a way that would encourage people to hang around a bit and get to know each other, which I think was brilliant. Um, and that's actually something that I've only just recently started to appreciate, again, through studying the history of Elizabeth and then noticing that pattern. It's like, hang on, all these local shops had these seating areas and um, which immediately sends a message to people, you know, that, oh, well, this is a place where we can actually sit and chat and, you know, we don't have to just get in and get out kind of thing. Um, and of course those early shops too were designed to be leased to local residents as well. Um, the whole structure of Elizabeth was designed for, um, easy access on foot for people getting out and, you know, walking to their local shop and all that kind of thing. So whereas now it's, you know, the, the shops are much bigger. They're obviously designed for you to get in and get out as quickly as possible. Um, so you enter those places with that mindset 
which means you you know there's I mean the difference in mindset to that I think is if you know you're going somewhere that's designed for you to feel welcome and to interact with people then that's the mindset you go in with it's like but if the if the idea is you're going somewhere where you know it's all designed for you to get in and get out as quickly as possible then there's a there's a, an inclination to kind of edit out whatever isn't needed in that objective. Do you know what I mean? If my objective is to get in and get out as quickly as I can, I, I probably don't even notice people. Do, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. But in, in saying that too, I think that's the mindset of people, not so much the, um, uh, the you know, the design or the architecture or, or of something. But I think people just in general now, you know, shop with their heads down, Yeah. you know, the, um, I think life just generally happens. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was always told to, you hold your head up high and be proud. And do you know what I mean? Um, right. Take in that sense, you know, if somebody's not smiling, offer them one of yours. You know, real old school. Oh. Oh, you know, real, was that your nana? That <laughs> sounds very nana. You know, real old school stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I just got told I was edgy this morning and now I'm going back to old school. <laughs> Hey, um, and in saying old that, old school is the new edge. Uh, old school is the new edge. edge, and that's the really cool thing I must <laughs> add: is being a '70s girl, you're born in such an era where you appreciate what we had, but you um, you're still cool enough to understand what's happening. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas now, my mum was born in 1948, and so when my girls and I talk about stuff. She feels a little bit out of the loop. So, you know, being being 40 and almost 50 isn't such a bad thing. I think it's a very cool age because I understand back then, but I also understand the direction of where we're going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And she, yeah. she feels a little bit lost in, a, I think, a black hole or the Milky Way because it's so busy out there on the roads now. Back in the day, it wasn't. Mm. So. Um, and even if you study history, you know, I mean, pre-World War Two, mid-20th century, you know, it was it was post that time that the 60s revolution happened, you know, the 50s, all rock and roll and rebellion. Um, it was much more kind of conformist in a way before then. Um, it, there, were, there was more emphasis on fitting into a tribe than there was in your individuality. That all kind of came post-World War II. Um, and so, and I think now we're in a time where I think it's a, a good thing to think about what's been lost in that transition. I think it's a beautiful thing to celebrate your individuality. Um, but at the same time, I think something has been lost in terms of, you know, appreciating community and appreciating, uh, how, how your individuality can contribute to a community or a tribe or, and, and the history of that. Um, I think, something has just been lost in, in our need as, as a humanity to discover who we are as individuals. There's been, um, a kind of a, a necessary breaking away from the tribe, which is what I've felt. Certainly I've lived most of my adult life, uh, breaking away from the tribe. Um, but at same time, and maybe it's an aging thing as well, you know, cause I just turned 50 and certainly throughout my forties, I started thinking about what kind of elder I want to be, you know, because, um, I think a lot of midlife is, um, about discovering as you move forward, what you have to offer people who are coming after you. Um, at least that's what it's been like for me. Um, it was, it was either that thinking about who I want to become as I move towards becoming a... I was terrified of becoming a useless old man, to be honest. I didn't want to become some, like an old person that young people look at and think, God help me, don't ever let me become that guy. You know, like I, I, I think as you get older, younger people should be able to look to you for counsel. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? And so, but in, in, that, in that transition period that we've gone through of needing to find our individuality, I think that sense of responsibility kind of got lost a little bit or even understanding where, where you might fit in terms of, uh, the tribe, if that makes sense. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. I, I mean, again, it's... this is so heavy. <laughs> 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 this, this 
got nothing to, and do you know what it that uh, that is just philosophical. That is life yeah. wherever yeah. you live. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, you get to an age where you know you become a responsible adult. Where well, hopefully, um, adulting is hard. You know, some people you know? at middle age they now. they they leave their spouse for someone half their age and buy a sports car, and that's an option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you get a nose ring. <laughs> It's cheaper. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's it is cheaper. I don't know. <laughs> but do you know what? In saying that, totally off tangent, uh, I get told it's a midlife crisis. This whole crisis. podcast has been off tangent. <laughs> well, we may see more of this in the new year. I have no idea. This is either a, a lovely cap up to the year and the videos that have come before this one. Uh, or the start of something new and beautiful. And uh, we'll get different people in uh, each week and talk about all those different versions of Elizabeth. I think what might be a really nice idea is to get somebody um, uh, older again and then get somebody quite are young. There, are there people older than us? Yeah, yeah you know are. what I mean? Their perspective <laughs> and then get somebody really young, like go from each end of the yeah, spectrum. I'm really, I'm yeah. really interested in, again, you know, I think around the age of four or five, you start to become really aware of your environment mm. and when I think of, you know, that age now, four, five, six, seven, that kind of idea. And then, I mean, say you're growing up in Elizabeth Field, well, Davron Park, when I was growing up, it was called Elizabeth Field or Smithfield Plains. You know, you've got these shops that are being left to go derelict. They're not being maintained. When I was growing up, those shopping centers were vibrant and they were active and every shop was leased by some business. It, it wasn't like it is now, you know, the schools that are boarded up or being left to go derelict or knocked down. Um, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what growing up in that Elizabeth would be like for a young person's self-esteem. I can't imagine that it's good. So I'd be very uh, keen to talk to people of all different generations um, because everyone's experience of Elizabeth, as I said, is valid. It's easy to look at a place like Elizabeth at a superficial level and just broad stroke the whole place with one brush. But that doesn't, you know, that doesn't uh, do a place justice. It doesn't do the people any justice. And it's, you know, like everything in life, it's far more complex than that. And beneath whatever is on the surface is the humanity of a place. So There's some really good stuff. And I think what... Uh to top it off, I think, too, is that those people who've made a success of themselves but stayed in Elizabeth. Does that make sense? Because uh, the other saying, too, that you'll probably laugh and that many people will probably hear is that you can't polish a turd. Mm. Um, and I hate that saying. Mm. You know, I, I really do. And, uh, I've, you know, I've stayed here. I've worked here. And, and I'm proud here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm a couple of streets away from Craigmore, mm. and, uh, but I'm still Elizabeth Downs. I was Elizabeth Grove. Mm. But, you know, I don't, as a person, I don't change. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So um, I think it's really good that people can stay and work hard. Uh, those people are Holdens. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we've all got stories and mm. they all need to be heard. So well done. Yeah. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> might be a bit early for uh, congratulations, but we'll see how no, we go. But it's nice just to, you know, be asked, uh, yeah. I guess, how things are and yeah. how it was for you. And, and normally, like, I guess the art of storytelling, like I said, is lost. So yeah. uh, if this is to continue, then um, I think it's a really good idea. I think it's a really good initiative. Fabulous. Thank you. Mm. Well... If you would like to share your uh, version of Elizabeth on this uh, show, leave a comment down below. And uh, I should probably give an email address or something, shouldn't mm. I? You can email me at, I'll, I'll make up, I'll set the account up when I get home, I guess. You can email me at I was here, Elizabeth SA at gmail.com. And uh, you can either come on the show. Or I can come to you because I've been going out to the community and doing some interviews with uh, people as well. Um, it may not be viable for you to come in. Uh, for some people it wouldn't be. Mm. Um, especially if you've been here since 1955, as some people have. You might not want to leave your home. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not me personally. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sharina. Thank, Thank you, you, Jay. Namaste. Bye-bye. <laughs>